This was my second attack against the governor of the Bank of Canada, trying to get him charged with genocide for putting farmers out of work in a world that's starving with his interest rate policies when he could restrict the bank's computers to a pure service charge. And he didn't. And the courts didn't make him do it. And a billion souls have been let go who would have survived if these judges had not been so low-tech. So, we went after Bank as a Gaming House, and now Bank as a Genocide House. Now it's a charge of murder. Citizen, uh, 1980, October 3rd. The Ontario Supreme Court has turned down John Turmel's bid for an order forbidding the Bank of Canada to charge interest, so Turmel has decided to charge the bank with murder. He said today he would be filing with the court clerk today a request for a writ of mandamus to force a Crown Attorney to proceed with two charges against the Bank of Canada, genocide and keeping a common gaming house. Citing the gambling provisions of the Criminal Code, Termel likens interest to a fee charged for the use of chips, money, in a game, industrial activity. Termel asked the Ontario Supreme Court last Monday to order the bank to cease and desist the genocidal banking practice of interest and switch to a pure service charge. Well, next article, um, the 7th of October, Judge's Advice, Go Home, by Dennis Foley. Gambler political aspirant John Turmel was ingloriously shot down Tuesday in Ontario Supreme Court as he attempted to put his fight against the Bank of Canada through the courts. Turmel was asking the court to force the Crown Attorney to charge the federal bank with advocating genocide and keeping a common gaming house. He contends that banks' interest rates are strangling people. An earlier motion to have the bank prohibited from charging interest was dismissed without reasons after the judge patiently listened to Turmel's theories for 50 minutes. As the second hearing opened, Assistant Crown Attorney Richard Mosley, who had the task of opposing the motion, asked that it be postponed until later in the day as he had to appear in another court. Mr. Justice Mayor Lerner ignored the request, saying the matter wouldn't take long, and then asked Termell if he was a lawyer. When Termell said he was not, the lawyer said, oh, just a concerned citizen. Lerner then repeatedly asked Termell if he had any basis in law for making the motion, interrupting every time Termell tried to digress into his theory that the criminal code, wouldn't let me open the book, said it was illegal. A theory that the criminal code says so. <laughs> I have read your papers, submitted with the motion, and there's no merit in them. Motion denied, the judge said bluntly. Well, Justice Lerner, a billion extra souls croaked because you wouldn't help. I hope you're getting kicked up there. Termel then asked the judge if he could suggest where to go next, implying a continuation of his legal battle. Home, the judge succinctly replied. Yeah, yeah. So, on to the Court of Appeal. Must have gotten thrown out. No press. Finally, into the Supreme Court of Canada. And, boom! Supreme Court says, phooey the charges against Bowie. And what's neat is I was running in a Hamilton by election at that time. And this is the Hamilton Spectator. I had been there that morning in the Supreme Court of Canada. Been thrown out. And by the time I made it back to Hamilton six hours later, it was on the front page of the newspaper. Wow, what a shock. And then Bowie won't face his charges, top court tells political gadfly in the Globe and Mail. Toronto Star, no trial for Bowie on killer interest rates. Spectator, Termel feels shafted in fight against Bowie. So, CP, Canadian Press, Ottawa. Bank of Canada Governor Gerald Bowie will not be charged with genocide or keeping a common gaming house, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled yesterday. A panel of three judges, alternating between amusement and annoyance, refused to hear arguments supporting the charges from professional gambler and sometime politician John Turmel of Ottawa. Mr. Turmel, 31, was seeking a judicial order to have Ontario's Attorney General lay the genocide charge against Mr. Bowie on grounds the Bank of Canada's interest rate policies are killing people. He wanted the Supreme Court to order the Ontario Court of Appeal to give him more time to appeal lower court decisions refusing to order the charge to be laid. Mr. Turmel told the court that every time a farmer is forced into bankruptcy because of high interest rates, food production is slashed and starvation increases. See the link? Only a lawyer or a judge wouldn't. His, he maintained that about 46,000 babies die of starvation throughout the world daily because farmers can't afford to grow food. Mr. De Bowie should also be charged with keeping a common gaming house, Mr. Tremel argued, because the bank is gambling that customers will be able to repay principal and interest on their loans when they all already got the principal.
He pointed to the French origins of the word mortgage to support his case. Mort is the French word for death, and gage is a form of the French word to wager. The usury rake-off set by Gerald Bowie, governor keeper of the Bank Gaming House of Canada, creates a genocidal gamble, aptly named Mort Gage, Death Gamble, for its requirements that the participants in the death gamble repay both the principal and the usury when the banks only created and loaned out the principal. Mr. Turmel said. Natural law, biblical law, and criminal law indict the mortgage as the greatest atrocity ever inflicted on mankind. It is the proverbial root of all evil. He urged that the bank's computers be reprogrammed to eliminate interest charges until the legality of interest rates can be determined by the courts. And let's face it, the Let software is a software that uses only service charges and no interest charges, and there's proof positive it works. So these judges were being asked basically to install a let style software before it was invented by Michael Linton three or four years later. Mr. Justice Roland Ritchie said Mr. Turmel's views were undoubtedly all very interesting. Yeah, trying to save 46,000 dying babies a day. But beyond the jurisdiction of this court to order the Interest Act be declared unconstitutional, forcing the banks to restrict the computers to a pure service charge and abolishing the interest charge. We're really not concerned with matters so esoteric as your arguments. Well, burn buster, there's a billion souls croaked since you said this who wouldn't have croaked if you'd fixed the system. Finally, an article in the Hamilton Spectator next day. Well, Termel feels shafted in fight against Bowie. They blew it, I've been shafted. That was John Turmel's reaction to a Supreme Court of Canada decision yesterday that ruled Gerald Bowie, governor of the Bank of Canada, wouldn't be charged with genocide or keeping a common gaming house. Mr. Turmel, a professional gambler and politician, is a candidate in the Hamilton West Provincial by-election and had requested that the charges be laid. Mr. Turmel maintains that bank interest rates are responsible for thousands of children starving to death around the world because interest rates have forced many farmers out of business. Mr. Turmel grew up in Hamilton but now lives in Ottawa, represents the fledged Christian Credit Party, which opposes all bank interest and supports establishing no-fault fire and auto insurance. He accuses the Conservatives, Liberals, and New Democrats of being controlled by the banks. The other three parties are bought, lock, stock, and barrel, he said. Mr. Turmel has run in 10 other Ontario elections, told an all-candidates meeting last night that the court's decision me doesn't mean the end of his fight against interest rates. It's either people in the poorhouse or bankers in the jailhouse, he said. Mr. Turmel said that if people, everybody refused to pay interest on their mortgages, the courts would become so backlogged with cases that the government would be forced to intervene. We're going to bog the courts down, he warned. He said that if he was elected, he would personally take every mortgage foreclosure in his riding to the Supreme Court. If I get in, I'm going to get the banks off your back, he said. I represent revolution. Mr. Turmel said government should be providing interest-free credit. Interest kills jobs, he said. We should cut the banks right off. There's no reason the government can't provide banks. Banking services. Finally, last article. <clears throat> John Turmel, fight vowed despite ruling, running in Hamilton. The three candidates, along with Christian Credit Party candidate John Turmel, were invited to speak by the Duran Neighborhood Association, fielded questions. Mr. Turmel said the abortion problem is rooted in poverty and there would be solved by the abolition of interest. I represent revolution, said Mr. Turmel, whose sole platform is abolition of interest rates. If I get in, I'll get the bankers off your back because as a gambler, I just love breaking banks. So those are the arguments that I organized for everybody to use to back up our Jesus defense. You remember you heard Mrs. Metcalf telling the court, I can show you how the death gamble works. Well, that was the little game. I made her show everybody how to pledge your watch as collateral, lend them all 10 dimes, and then make them all come up with 11 dimes, and nine guys come up with 11 dimes, one guy gets squeezed out, you take his watch, tell the winners how many dimes you got, 100, gee, now there's only one, nine watches, your dimes have inflated. So, I learned, taught her how to do the repossession of the watches through the dime trick, and she could explain to the judges how it was a gamble on who would survive, as well as the genocide, and the gaming house, and the well, criminal law was handy, we had that, so the Jesus defense Defense, which is to give back the principle that you got, but stiff them for the interest that you didn't get. And everybody learned that trick, that mortgage little game, to show their friends and demonstrate that it was a gamble, and an illegal gamble, and a genocidal gamble. And that's the argument for the Jesus defense against foreclosures.